Hello and good afternoon, CSI 157, Section 841 students for the Spring 2014 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. The following video is going to walk you through the solution set as a tutorial for Packet Tracer Activity 5.3.3.5. So first we'll take a look over at the Packet Tracer Activity details here and you can see it provides you with an addressing table so that you can fill things in once you've collected the relevant data. And the objectives for this packet tracer activity are to document the current network configurations and then configure, deploy, and test the new multi-layer switch. And so this is actually a very interesting activity because it's going to allow you to create a multi-layer switch with the configuration for two devices that we're going to replace, which is going to be R1 and S2. Okay, so the scenario is the network administrator is replacing the current router and switch with a new layer 3 switch. As the network technician, it's your job to configure the switch and place it into service. You'll be working after hours to minimize disruption to business. And this activity begins with a score of 8 out of 100 because the device connections for the PC PCs are scored. You will delete and restore these connections in part 2. All right, so let's take a look at oops, take a look at part 1. So normally a production router would have many more configurations. However, this one is for just this packet tracer activity. So it's not going to have much more than the IP addresses assigned to it. So as you can see here, we have our common boot up messages. And I'm in user uh, exec mode. I'm going to move into privileged exec mode by typing EN, which stands for enable. And it actually asks you to use the available commands to gather Ad, uh, interface addressing information. So we can do show IP interface brief and that's going to show me some information. So this information that you see here you're going to want to document this that way you can at a later time configure that multi-layer switch. So gig 00 is 172.16.31.1 and gig 01 is 192.168.0.2 However, the show IP interfaces brief doesn't display the subnet masks. So let's see what else we can take a look at. Possibly the show running config command. And there you go. So the show running config is going to show us that both subnet masks are slash 24s or 255.255.255.0. And so for gig 01 and gig 00, we, know, we now know the IP addresses as well as the subnets. And so we can scoot down a little further here and see that, in fact, that's all that's configured are the IP addresses. Part number two says configure, deploy, and test the new multi-layer switch. So configure multi-layer switch 1 to use the addressing scheme from R1. So we'll go ahead and let's open up the multi-layer switch. Whoops, I'll open up the multi-layer switch. We're going to go to the CLI. As you can see here, we're running software version 12.237 SE1, and this is a 3560. And again, as we had mentioned in class, typically, and this is changing just a little bit, but typically, if the switch starts with a 2, so 2950, 2960, typically those switches are only capable of layer 2 functionality. Uh, this is changing, like I said, with the 2960X, where you're going to have some limited um, layer 3 functionality. So, and again, conversely, if, it's, if the switch model number starts with a 3, like the 3560, the 3650, the 3750, the 3850, those switches are capable with the right software image, and here we have advanced IP services and not LAN based, so this is clearly capable of layer 3 functionality. So if the switch model starts with a 3, it's capable of layer 3 functionality. So we'll hit enter a few times here. We'll go in from user uh, config mode, to, I'm sorry, user exec mode to privilege exec mode. And it says enter the interface configuration mode for gigabit 01 and then change the port routing mode by entering the no switch port command. So we'll go to global config mode from privileged exec mode and we're going to go into interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. So we need to change this if I do a do show run gi 0 slash 1. 
Uh, so it might want the whole thing, or it may be a problem. Let's see here. So do show run gigabit ethernet zero slash one. Yeah, the do command may not be doing what we expect it to do within Packet Tracer. However, on normal uh, Cisco gear with the full Cisco operating system, the do show run for, oh, I'm sorry. I may have actually left out a keyword there. Nope, still not working. Okay, so that's okay. And with the full iOS, there is a way to view that. So from here, we're gonna enter the no switch port command. And so this changes this port from a layer two port to a layer three port. And now we wanna configure the IP address to be the same as the address for R1 gigabit 01, which was 192.168.0.2. So I'm gonna type the no shut command and we're gonna type IP address 192.168.0.2 and the subnet mask again is a slash 24, which is 255.255.255.0. And I'm going to add a description in as well, and we'll put down the same as R1 GI0 slash 1 interface. Okay, now it says enter the interface configuration mode for VLAN 1. So we'll type in int VLAN 1, and it says configure the IP address to be the same as the address for R1 gig 0, 0 and activate that port. So we'll do a no shut. And then I'm going to go ahead and assign the IP address of 172.16.31.1. And I'm going to go ahead and hit, oops, sorry, Look, get the subnet mask in there, 255.0. And we'll put a quick description in here, and this is going to be, and again, uh, configuring this layer 3 interface, it's known as a switched, a switch virtual interface. So it's a virtual layer three interface. So instead of a physical port, it's actually done in software in the iOS, but it still serves as a layer three interface. So I'll put in SVI and we'll keep it uh, same as R1 gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. All right, and so let me go ahead and type in and it says save the configuration. So you could do the copy running config, startup config, however, write memory is the command I choose to use which is just W-R-I-M-E-M -E and now if we do a show run on the switch you can see we have multiple interfaces but there's the gig01 and also our VLAN one and both of those are up and operational so if I type show IP interface brief oops, brief let's come down toward the bottom you can see that Gig01 is configured, as well as the switch virtual interface for VLAN1. Okay, so the next step, step two, deploy the new multi-layer switch. And we're gonna verify that connectivity has been restored. So the following steps would normally be done after hours. So we're gonna, I'm gonna click an empty area to unselect all devices, which I've just done. Use the delete tool to remove all the connections or simply delete router one, switch one, and switch two. So if I click the X and I click on switch one, it's all gone. If I click on router one and switch two, right? So those devices are all gone. Still have the PCs here. So it says select the appropriate cables to complete the following. So connect the multi-layer switch, gigabit ethernet zero one, to the edge gigabit zero zero which is that router so we'll switch over to the connections here and we're going to go ahead and use a copper straight through and again we're supposed to be using gig zero one off the multi-layer switch to edge gigabit zero zero and as you can see the lights turn immediately green so a straight through cable can be used for a switch to a router connection and it says connect the PCs to fast Ethernet ports on multi-layer switch one. So we'll do from fast Ethernet 0, 0, 002, fast Ethernet 0, 01 for PC1. We'll do fast Ethernet 0, 02 for PC2. And we'll do fast Ethernet 3 for PC3. And finally, we will do fast Ethernet 0. 
04 for PC4. And as you can see right now, let me see if I'm able to move. Ah, good, okay, so we can move some of these PCs to clean this up a little bit here. There we go. It's going to give us a little better picture of what we're looking at. Again, we have spanning tree, which is converging. And so these will light up in turn, right? And remember, we see amber when spanning tree is converging, and then there you go. Now we're in the forwarding state. When it turns green, it's transitioning to the forwarding state, which means it's fully operational. All right, so our final step says verify the PCs can all ping edge at 192.168.0.1. So if we take a look here, oh, it's not going to let us look at the edge, so that's okay. So we'll go ahead and ping the address. I was going to attempt to pull up the CLI for the edge router to take a look at the configuration. So from the PC, I'm going to go ahead and ping 192.168.0.1. And chances are that the first ping may not function, that it may time out. And there it is. Now we're hoping to see that the remaining, and there they are. All right. So that was a, a function of the ARP process, populating the ARP cache. And so now let's take a look at PC2. And we'll come to the desktop here to command mode, and I'm going to ping 192.168.0.1. And let's see what happens. And again, first request timed out, and then we immediately get the subsequent three requests. And there we go. And so the reason that PC1 missed two, and let's make sure that we see that. So the reason that PC1 missed the first two pings, 192.168.0.1, and the subsequent hosts are only missing one ping, and there you go, as we would expect, is because when we initially did our ping command, the ARP cache for the PC as well as the multi-layer switch were both missing the ARP cache entry for the edge router. And so we lost two pings, right? But PC2, PC3, and PC4, all of whom are missing the ARP cache entry, only miss one ping because the multi-layer switch has the entry now. As a result of us doing the ping from PC1 the very first time, and as you can see here, we also just missed it, and now we should miss. Uh, we shouldn't be missing any pings, and it works. So what was happening was PC1 missed the first two pings because neither the PC nor the multi-layer switch had an ARP cache entry for the edge router that we were pinging. So then once it populated on the switch and PC1, there were no pings missed, and then PC2 and subsequent PCs 3 and 4 will only miss that one first ping while they pop populate their ARP cache. And again, that entry was already on the multi-layer switch after PC1 had done its ping command through. And so that's why PC1 missed two pings, and PCs 2, 3, and 4 only missed a single ping. All right, so let's go ahead and check our results on this activity. We'll check our assessment items. You can see that we've got all green checks, and our score is 100 out of 100, and we completed all 12 items. So let me go ahead and close this window. All right, so at this point, what you would want to do is come to File, and we'll do Save As. And typically, you want to put your name in here. And you want to save this activity because this is the activity that you're going to be uploading to the Dropbox area in the Angel system for our class. All right, that was activity 5.3, Packet Tracer activity 5.3.3.5, and I look forward to seeing all of you on Tuesday evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.